Hello, welcome to Chandwell. This is a new series where I'm going to show you how I use the free open source application Inkscape to help me do all of my scratch building on the layout. I use Inkscape for everything from the simple things like this road to the more complicated, like the iron girder bridge that the road goes under. I even made this iron arched bridge using just Inkscape. And I think the outcome was fantastic. There's a video in the top right if you're interested to see how I actually made that bridge. Today though, I'm going to start with the absolute basics of Inkscape. I'm going to show you how I made this. It's just a very gently curving road. I ordinarily wouldn't use Inkscape for something so simple, but it uses most of the absolute basic elements of Inkscape and it shows you how I use them to get the results that I do on my scratch builds. In future episodes, I'm going to show more advanced features of Inkscape. We're going to actually build something much more impressive than a little hill with a road on top. I'm going to build a river bridge that the road is going to go over, based upon one in Otley in Yorkshire. If you want to watch the build of that bridge, please subscribe, and I hope you like this new series. So here we are with Inkscape just opened. This is a very simple thing we're going to do. So. You normally wouldn't use Inkscape for something so simple, but I wanted to show some of the basics first. So we're looking at a blank sheet of A4 paper in front of us. What I normally do is I ignore that to start with because I like to get my drawings done irrespective of the size of paper they're eventually going to be printed upon. So what you can do is you can just scroll upwards until the page disappears. And now we've got a white canvas into which we can do our drawing. Also make sure that the units are set correctly if we look up here at the top, I've got mine set to millimetres. You can choose to work in centimetres, inches, if you wish. But generally, I work in millimetres, and obviously I model in N-gauge, so two millimetres is one foot in the real world. So I'm going to go over to the left-hand side and choose the rectangle um, icon. It says there, create rectangles and squares. Once the tool is selected, you'll see my mouse cursor has changed. It's showing a little rectangle there. I'm going to simply click and drag to create a rectangle. Now an important thing to know about Inkscape is how it measures things. If we select that rectangle, up in the top we see four boxes. We see its X and Y position, and that's where it is on the canvas. We don't need to worry about that just yet. But you also see its width and its height. So I happen to have drawn a rectangle there, 579 millimeters wide by 288 millimeters tall. If we click onto the rectangle and choose to color it in, let's color it in red, we now need to make it the size that we want for the layout. So I want it to be 39 millimeters wide. So I'm coming up to the width box here, select the text that's in there already, and type three, 390 millimeters, that's 39 centimeters. That is now the correct width. <clears throat> now I said that I wanted it to start at 23 millimeters high and finish at 40 millimeters high. So I'm going to make the height 40 millimeters. So there's our rectangle. Now we can zoom in if we wish. There's a zoom bar at the bottom. So we can click the plus button and the minus button to zoom in and out. Or we can hold the control key down on our keyboard and just wheel the mouse in and out. And that's a good way of zooming in and out. So there we have our rectangle. 39, 39 centimeters wide by four centimeters tall. Now if we come over to this side of the rectangle and zoom in a bit more, I'm going to draw one more rectangle. Same again, select the rectangle tool and just drag it out. Doesn't matter what size I make it. But it's important to make it a different color just so you can see what's going on. I'm going to make this one a nice blue. I'm going to make this one 23 millimeters tall. So this is the height that I want the road to start. And this red one is the height that I want the road to finish. Now, I'm going to drag this rectangle close to the red one and as you'll see as I reach the bottom of its corner it snaps to it. See how it jumps onto the corner? That's called snapping and that's a very powerful tool in Inkscape that we use all of the time. To make sure it's turned on for you look at the very far right hand side of the screen. This top button turns snapping on and off altogether. We can turn it off and now it doesn't snap anymore. If we turn it on, it does snap. This one turned on, um, it's called Snap Nodes, Paths and Handles, and this one, Snap to Cusp Nodes, including Rectangle Corners. Those two are the important ones that we need for this. 
So with those turned on, we can drag the drag this close to the bottom corner and snap it on, and then that's there. And if we zoom in right close, you can see that it's perfectly lined up. So that comes in handy for what we're about to do. What I want is I want to have the road to be 200 millimeters of flat road before it starts going uphill. So I'm going to do another rectangle. This time I've chosen a different color again. I'll make it green. I'm going to make this rectangle the same height as the blue one, which is 23 millimeters. And I'm going to make it 200 millimeters wide. And I'm going to drag this one and drop it there. So now we have our rough outline of where we want our hill to be. So I'm going to select the fine point pen tool. Um, it's this one here. It looks like a fine line of pen. It's drawing, drawing a curved line. I'm going to click that. And as you see, as I drop it on the corners, it snaps to the corners of objects. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click it once in the bottom corner and that activates the line tool. I'm going to click once on the green one. I'm going to click once on the other side of the green one. Click at the top of the red one, the bottom of the red one, and then back to where I started. And then choose a select tool. And what that's done is it's drawn a shape for us, which I'm going to colour in a nice yellowy colour. So there we are. So we can drag that away now. And that is the rough outline of our hill. We can delete all the other objects. We don't need those anymore. They were just there for our guidelines. So you see, you do see a lot of layouts with hills like this, where you've got a bit of flat ground, then a sudden transition to an uphill. It doesn't look very realistic though, and I want to make this a little bit more of a, a gradual curve, make it look like what a road really would. So to do that, I'm going to choose the node tool, and the node tool is this one in the top. It says edit paths by nodes. When I select that, you'll see that each individual point where I clicked has turned into a little diamond shape. And what I can do is I can drag those diamond shapes to change the shape. Drag any one of them. But we don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to make this line here into a nice curve. So to do that, I'm going to click somewhere in the middle of the line and then just start dragging. And you'll see that's now turned that line into a nice curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it down and to the right a little bit. Something like that. And there we've got the basic, the basis of a, of a hill um, starting towards the end. Now, I think this is far too steep um, looking at it. So if I select the node tool again, um, we can move this node possibly somewhere to the left. Now I could just move it to the left like this, but then I risk making it all look a bit bendy. But if you press control down, then you can only move it left and right just until it starts looking a bit better, a bit more gradual. So that looks okay. We can also use this little circle here just to play with it a little bit more. Um, but I'm going to possibly go something like that. I also think that the four centimeters um, the, the, it might be, it might be too big. Um, so I'm quickly going to do another box make it only let's go 35 millimeters high something like that so i think that looks more or less how i was wanting so it's a flat road for a while then it starts going uphill gradually yep and that's our shape so that's the shape that we want so what we can do now is start thinking about how to print it and get it onto some card. If we zoom back out and drag it down to our A4 sheet of paper, you'll see it doesn't fit on. So if we chop this in half, we can get it onto the paper. There's an easy way of chopping it in half. We don't need to worry about it. What we can do is we can draw a rectangle, roughly, this, roughly the width of the paper. So we've got, a, we've got a rectangle there on top, and then we've got this. So we place this here somewhere, and the rectangle on top. We can then select them both. Now to select two objects in Inkscape, we click the first one and we hold shift down and click the second one. Now making sure that the rectangle is on top and the shape that we want is underneath and with the both selected, we can go to the path menu and click division. What this does is it takes the top object, chops it. So where the rectangle was, we've now chopped that in half. So 
get them arranged on the paper, it doesn't matter how yet, and I'll, I'll show you why in a second. Select them both, and this is where this is now where I set them up ready for printing. So we're going to do a fill of white, I'm going to have an outline of a mid grey. So if we hold down shift and choose 50% grey, and then click white without holding any buttons down, that now gives us an outline that we can print. I want to print three of them out, like I said. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them both and you can click them and hold shift down like we did before. Or you can just use your mouse and drag around them and that selects them both. Select them both. I'm then going to duplicate them. So I'm going to hold down control and press D on my keyboard or we can do edit duplicate. If we do edit duplicate, there's now created two of them. I'm going to just drag down and now we've got two sets. Do duplicate again, control D and drag down. We now have three sets. So because I'm going to stick this onto some card and then cut around it once the glue's dry, I need to have some space um, around my objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that bottom one and drag it to the bottom of the paper. Maybe put it there. So that one at the bottom and that one at the top, well, wouldn't it be nice to be able to just space them out um, between the two? And we can do that. So we can select everything by dragging a box around it. And then on the right hand side here, we've got align and distribute. I'm going to click that. And then I'm going to click this one here, which is distribute centers equidistantly vertically. If we click that, all of our pieces are now evenly spread out on the page. And that is what we're going to then cut out roughly, stick to card, and then cut out neatly once it's finished. And that's all there is to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print that out by using file print and that is it. Once we've done that, um, we're going to cut around them, stick them to card and then chop them out and get it on the layout and see how it works. So that's the first step by step thing I've ever done in Inkscape. I don't know if I'm any good at it or whether this has been of use to you. Um, please put some comments down below um, of things you might want to see more of things I didn't explain very well or whether you think I should just give up this because I was no good at all. Um, so it'd be interesting to hear your comments. Um, thank you for this bit. Let's see how it looks on the layout. And there it is. So I printed it, stuck it to card, and then glued all the card together and it looks okay. Um, it's very subtle. Um, it was a lot of effort for very little return, really, but I did want to show some of the Inkscape basics. So that's it. I hope that that was of some use. Um, if you did enjoy that, or if you want to follow the rest of this series, or even if you don't want to see Inkscape again, you just want to watch the rest of my normal videos, please click that class 47 down there, subscribe, and I'll see you for my next one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again.